Gene has talked ever since I've known him about people that have a religious spirit as being like damaged goods because when you grow up in traditional religion, it's all about establishing really your own righteousness, doing your own good works, you know, to save yourself. It's, and it's really hard to even get saved. And I know what that traditional religion is actually like. I was pretty damaged goods myself. And I wrote a little thing about that, and I'm gonna put it in the comments section. I'm not gonna read it in the video about the damaged goods of the religious spirit, the soul that can't stop establishing their own righteousness, but not they don't understand the righteousness of God. So I was talking to my friends even about the seduction of Eve in the garden, you know, because God didn't really mean what he said. So let's just make it up as we go, right? Because God didn't really mean it. And if you eat from this tree, God knows that you're just gonna be like him. And you get to be God, and you'll discern what's good and evil, right? Very spirited Jezebel, fear and control. You can be the, you can be the controller of the world and play God, and see how fearful and controlling that will make you to play God. So that tree was good for fruit, right? It was pleasant to the eyes. Oh, I'm gonna get what I need. Let's just slander and accuse God. You know, that's who the devil is—the slander, the accuser because I'm really not going to get what I need if if I abide in his vine and bear good fruit and eat good fruit. I, I'm not going to get what I need anymore. Oh, my gosh. And besides, I should be the one to lean on my own understanding and play God. You know, God doesn't quite have the story straight. So that kind of is the religious spirit. And you look at what Adam did, ate the husband, he ate the fruit with her. He's a bit like Jesus who just died for his wife. You know, and so the spirit of death is real in the life of those playing God. I was a dead woman walking without understanding this. So I'm making this video today to actually share another link because when I was down, down, down and out, I, I had decided to give my children away and had people lined up to give them away too. And so I was really going down fast. My first daughter left me and it was like chopping my arm off. So I realized this is not good. I didn't realize that it was almost chopping the arms off of three other people. And so I'm watching them bleed. I'm bleeding even more. So you can get this scenario is becoming worse and worse and worse, right? Because I married somebody who was in traditional religion that was all about establishing his own righteousness too. Only his nickname was the Ted Bundy of Colorado, so it was an issue. Very, probably more intelligent than Ted Bundy. So here I am in the despair and the distraught of, of spiritual death and so depressed, I didn't know how to see out of it because I didn't know how to hear the Holy Ghost and obey him very well. Hadn't mastered that one at all. I hadn't even thought about the beauty of Romans 8. Walking after the Spirit might help you change your life a little and owning the crime scene of your selfishness. So I'm shipping my kids off to Bible, vacation Bible school every day for like a week. It was week long. And one day, one of them came home and said, Mommy, this man said to give you this book. Well, this book was called um, The Convict, Daniel Mann. And I'm going to leave a link to that because it's an audio book too. I don't know if it's just a sermon or the book yet because I haven't listened to it. It was absolutely life-changing for me. I had to look up the words. The book was so old, I didn't even know what latchkey meant. And so the book was written like in the early 1900s or the late 1800s, so I had to, I had to look up the terms that they were using that I, I didn't know what the words meant. But it was so life-changing because all night long I cried because I, it's like I, I made a list. I even got a piece of paper and a list out because I realized I was going crazy trying to establish my own righteousness. And I made a list of all the reasons why I should go to heaven. And then I made a list of all the reasons why I should go to hell. And the Holy Spirit said, you know, I'm the only ticket into the kingdom. You're not going to buy your way in. Sorry to tell you that. 
And owning my own selfishness was so life-changing because when you have a religious spirit, you have to be a good girl, you have to be a good girl. I'll be good, I'll be good, I'll be good. What do you want me to do, Lord? I'll be good, I'll be good, I'll be good. As you fret and whine and complain in your heart against the Lord like a drunk, damning everybody else for whipping you to be good, not realizing it's Satan himself giving you the whip. It's like living drunk. You, you have to sucker people into beating you to feel any relief from it. So um, I knew what that world was like. So it actually changed my life. I, I felt forgiven. I started really feeling forgiven because I just started telling the truth about being selfish and leaning on my own understanding. It's like I had this new side. It was like a pig with a big ring in, in my nose. And anywhere the devil wanted to lead me because I was afraid and leaning on my own understanding, I would go. I was a slave and it wasn't, I wasn't a slave to Jesus Christ. I wasn't a servant of the Holy Spirit that was inclining me to the voice of faith and hope and love and walking after the spirit, obeying what I couldn't see. I was all about leaning on my own understanding with all my heart, with all my mind and with all my strength. And that's kind of the altar that my family bowed down to. It doesn't lead to anything good because the just shall live by faith. The justified ones shall follow the voice of faith and hope and love. Because when we follow, follow the voice of fear and unbelief, welcome to hell. And welcome to everybody playing God. You can be like God. You can just discount everything it says in that good book and just pick out a few of those scriptures that tickle you. Yeah, I know that hell really well. I just thought I'd share the links today. The one... <laughs> I'll share it to the book and the audio. I think it's a sermon. I don't know if it's any good either. Just thought I'd tell you my little testimony of how I got out of, got back into the garden because I was happy to make my God my belly. I was happy to make my mind set on earthly things. I was happy to take conscience risks all the time by doing what, going, doing exactly what the voice of faith and love said to follow the voice of fear and unbelief. Yeah, so do the wind and you'll inherit the whirlwind. I've known a lot of people stuck in dead religion and a religious spirit, and their perfect fear is constantly casting out their love. But there's a way out. Amen.